Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. I am Peter Sidwell and this is Britain's Best Bakes. Today's recipes are all about bread. I have got my top tips on how to make sourdough at home for you and we are going to start today's episode with a beacon brown. Okay, beacon brown bread is a traditional Cumbrian bread. It is from the west coast of Cumbria, out Whitehaven, Workington, Egremont, all that Maryport, all that side of the west coast of Cumbria, sort of past the Lake District. Now, Whitehaven was a very famous port where lots of spices um, many, many years ago came through there for the whole of the UK. So the beacon brown is said to have come from there and it is enriched brown bread with this lovely stuff. Black treacle. Look at it. Just look how cool that is and it's glossy and it's just, it's just awesome. Now, if you haven't got black treacle, use molasses, okay? Because you want that sort of tart kind of dark, deep flavour, almost bittersweet. It's delicious. But we need to get going with our dough first. So it's a half and half blended for me to make a really good beacon brown. So 250 grams of strong white flour, 250 grams of brown flour, so wholemeal flour. We'll blend those together with your hand so that you've got a nice mix. And the reason why we use half and half is you get that strength and structural integrity from the white but you get the flavor and you get the color and things like that from the brown and the whole meal. Have you, have you made beacon brown, Emily, being a, a Westie yourself? Oh, you know I didn't even realize it came from white earth. Did you not? Nope. It, I mean, it's, it's anything spice related is connected to Whitehaven. Mm. So Cumberland sausage is connected to Whitehaven yeah. because that's where all the spices came through. It was said to be the second most busiest port in Britain at one stage. Yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew that. I really and it was it. also nearly invaded when England and America were at war with one another. Amer uh, England nearly got invaded through Whitehaven. Nearly. Didn't quite pan out that way. Quite, I, didn't, I, didn't I went down a YouTube that. rabbit warren hole oh, and I, I found a video and it was like, taught me all this stuff about Whitehaven and... Oh. The American Civil, uh, the American War of Independence against Britain, all that sort of stuff. Search it on YouTube. Fascinating, I thought. <laughs> anyway, right. So we've got yeast and salt in here. We have got um, seven grams. No, we haven't. I've upped it. We've got ten grams of dried yeast, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Ask me why in a minute, Emily. Ten grams of dried yeast, ten grams of salt, and two hundred and fifty grams of strong white and 250 grams of wholemeal brown, okay. Why did you put 10 grams of yeast? Because of this. Okay, we're gonna enrich our bread and make it nice and soft, and a really nice, lovely, soft crumb. And I've put 100 grams of butter or margarine in here. You could use uh, rapeseed oil if you wanted to. Any fat that you add to a dough will make it softer. So the more fat that you add, the softer the dough will become. So if you really don't want, if you want it crusty and crispy, leave the fat out of it, okay? But because we've added the fat, it makes it slightly heavier, which is why I've added up the yeast content, okay? To give it that extra bit of lift that it will need to cope with everything that's going in the dough. So you can see that is really quickly blended in if you've got a bread maker, chuck it all in, same recipe, and off you go. All right, so there we go. Right. So we've got a good mixture all the way through. Now, time for our treacle. I love adding treacle to bread. There we go. <laughs> it's just, it, you know when it's in there as well, it just gives such a distinct flavour. It's lovely. Okay. In it goes. Now, if you want the recipe, I'll ask Carlos to post it down the side here, all the ingredients, but then if you actually want to make it yourself and get the whole recipe, just type free book in the comments below. 
It'll launch into Facebook Messenger, follow the instructions, and we will deliver you our Britain's Best Bakes book. It will be an e-book as a PDF and it'll just appear. You can save it, you can print it, you do what you like with it. It's all yours. So add in our water. So we've gone for 300 mils of water and then get your hand as a claw motion into the center and just start to work it around, okay? Just using your fingers to begin with and then as the dough starts to form, there we go. Then we'll start to twist that dough and work it from a, just sort of a mixture into a really good dough, okay? So you can see it's just coming together. When it comes to a ball of dough, that's when it's time to transfer it onto your worktop. And then all you wanna do is knead it for 10 minutes. Now, it'll be quite sticky at the beginning. Just keep working it. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of flour just to allow me to knead this because it's, it's quite warm in the studio kitchen. And the warmer it becomes, the more water your bread dough will absorb. So you've got to make a judgment call. Um, so obviously if you live in a warm place, because people all over the world watch this program, which is amazing, and you kind of forget, in little old, we're in little old blighty and it's cloudy and not that warm today, but the studio has got quite warm because of all the lights. So I just needed to add that little bit more dough. No? Flour. I just needed to add that little bit more flour to make it manageable and allow me to knead it. And the way that you knead bread is you hold it with one hand, push it away, bring it back over itself. And just keep doing that for about five to 10 minutes until it becomes really nice and stretchy. And once it gets to that point, we're gonna put it back in the bowl, cover it and leave it to prove and double in size. Now, because we've added treacle, we've given the yeast some food, some like, it's like giving it LucasAid. It's gonna have like, it's gonna have a party in there and it's gonna rise a lot, okay? So what I would do is put it in the fridge for a couple of hours at least and just let it prove slowly. If you were to leave it in here in half an hour, it'd be like this and it will have doubled in size, okay? So the cooler the environment, the slower the prove will be. Okay, so this one's been in the fridge so that we could just slow it right down, okay? And the slower the prove, the more the flavor. Right, let's scoop this out and have a little look. So I've just used in a flexible dough scraper. They're really useful, these, these things. Just, there's our dough. Okay. So remember, if you've got any questions as well, just post them in the comments below. I will be all over it and I will help you. If you've never made bread before, check out our first episode from this series and I will teach you 101 bread dough basics. And if you've never made a bread before, get yourself in the kitchen and bake some bread. It's not as hard as people think. It's quite easy, really. Right, so this dough is nice and developed. It's had a couple of hours in the fridge. It's quite cold still, which is good because it's quite tight. It'll loosen out. Now here, I've got some raisins that I've soaked in a little bit of boiling water and some treacle. And basically the raisins, because they're dry, they've just gone and they've just drunk the treacle and the water and they're now sort of nice and soft and plump and full of flavor. Great addition to the bread. Really, really good. Give them a little squeeze because you don't want them too wet. All right, because otherwise it's gonna make your dough really, really wet but they've just had a proper party there. They've just sat in like a treacly bath mm -hmm. and they've loved it and they're full of flavor, which is gonna make them absolutely delicious. Now, if you don't like raisins, you could use prunes, you could use dried apple, you could use whatever sort of takes your fancy, but you just get these lovely little nuggets of sweetness in it. Now, we're just gonna incorporate the raisins into the dough. So we're gonna fold all four corners it does get a little bit messy now, but just persist, okay? So just knead it, turn it over and use your knuckles and just push it out, okay? And just try and any raisins that escape, put them back in, okay? And just kind of work it. You're gonna hate this noise, aren't you, Emily? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you're getting a little bit of a pickle, teaspoon of flour will be your best friend, all right? It'll bring everything back together. So you, you say not to do that when you're making a normal no. bread? No, but we've added, we've introduced moisture. Oh, OK. If we weren't adding moisture, I would say don't add flour because yeah. you're going to suck, the, you're going to change the hydration of your bread and it'll become a bit dry and tight. Because but because I've added something wet, I need to kind of counter it yeah. and just so it becomes manageable. And these, if you just added straight dried raisins, you wouldn't need to. Yeah. You'd just, you know, you'd just knead it, work it, shape it, done. But because they're wet, because they're, they've sat in that bath of treacle and water, yeah. they kind of make your dough unmanageable. Yeah. So just that little bit of flour makes it a bit more manageable. So what I'm going to do now is just turn it over. And I'm also almost at a point where I've got no raisins sticking out of the top. Now, can you see those raisins? Yeah. Just push them away. All right. Because if you put them in the oven like that, they'll burn. Okay, so push them off and just stick them to the bottom. All right, so now I've got a loaf of bread. So I'm going to just, my hands are a little bit sticky from the raisins, so just to handle it. There, can you see now it's moving around? And then I've got this crown here. This is the crown. I've got no creases on there. That's what I want. I want the bread just to prove up and create this lovely sort of proud top to the loaf and the way to do that is to make sure you've got no creases my creases can be under there right loaf tin so this is crusty bake from masterclass you can get these from cookserveandenjoy.com they're brilliant because they're perforated all the air can get through all the moisture can escape and you end up with a beautiful bake so in with our dough I'm going to let that prove now for an hour. I want it to double in size and then it's going into the oven. Now the difference with it going in the oven, turn it down to 180 degrees to bake it. Normally bread loaves would bake at like 200, 200 plus. When I put my loaf, um, when I put my oven on bread setting, it's at 220 degrees because you want it super hot because when the bread goes in, you want it to pop and bloom and start to grow. But because we've added treacle into this, if you did that at that temperature, it's gonna burn. So 180 degrees once it's proved and doubled in size. Right, so luckily I have got a bread here that I have baked already. How's that, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so you can see how I talked about that proud sort of crown of the bread, how it rises above. And then because we've used the crusty bake, all the air comes out and you get a lovely all round bake on the bread. Now, here's the good bit, Emily. We'll get to try it. I've got some proper butter. Can't have margarine on this. So if I just cut this so you can have a good look, but look, you can hear, yeah? Let's have a go. Nice. Oh, look at that, you can see all those lovely raisins in there. And because it's an enriched bread, and that means because we've added the butter or the margarine, whichever you prefer, you've got an incredibly soft, lovely crumb. And then it just deserves... Look, I've, I've, gone, I've gone little on the butter here for you, Emily. Sure. Yeah. There you go, you try that. I'm trying this while you learn how to make sourdough at home. Making sourdough at home is not as hard as you think. Get yourself a large preserving jar and make sure you put an equal amount of volume of bread flour and water into a jar, mix it together and repeat that process every day for eight days. Stir in every time you add your fresh ingredients and leave the lid off for an hour before returning to the fridge. First thing you need to do is pour the amount of starter that's required in the recipe into a clear jar. Put an elastic band around it at the level it sits. 
Then leave it for four hours to double in size. Meanwhile, measure out 300 mils of water in a bowl and pour your ingredient starter in to create the liquid for the bread. Add the flour and the starter and the water together and mix till it forms a soft ball of dough on your hand. Transfer to a worktop and knead for 10 minutes until it's smooth and stretchy. Once the dough is nice and stretchy and easy to work, transfer it into a bowl and then every 30 to 40 minutes, wet your hands and just fold the dough over itself. Lift the dough out of the bowl, add the salt and knead and shape for a couple of minutes until the salt's fully incorporated. Then roll into a ball and place in a floured banneton mold. Put the mold into the fridge and leave it overnight. This is where the bread does its magic. Remove it, place on a perforated baking tray. Score with a serrated knife so that as it proves, it curls up and creates an amazing crust. Preheat your oven to 220 degrees, place your bread in, add half a cup of water to create steam and let it bake. Okay, so that is how you make sourdough at home. Now, that is just a scratch of the surface on sourdough. It is a rabbit warren of information on sourdough. You can go online, you can go on YouTube, all sorts of things. If sourdough is something that you love, it's worth getting into. I've started baking again. I've, this is one of my loaves that I make, so maybe two or three of these a week. This is a basic white dough with some seeds in it. And you can sort of see the structure, but it's got wonderful sort of depth of flavor. It is a fantastic bread to learn how to make. It's a big commitment, but it is worth the rewards. Now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.